All right, Troy, another good win, another another uh, high-scoring affair. Tell us kind of what, what happened on the offensive side. Yeah, looking back at the uh, game against UConn, uh, really the key keys for the game were, number one, when we got in the red zone, we scored touchdowns. You know, against SMU the previous week, we got down there and, and we didn't score all the time. But this week when we got in the red zone, uh, we were able to score touchdowns, which was huge right here. You know, we kind of used tempo and uh, Otis, you know, he played well, bounced to the outside and scored. Um, here's another instance, Tempo and AK. Line did a great job coming off the ball, great movement. And then AK, great job of making a safety who's unblocked, missing a hole and score. And then once again, you know, we figured if they had more guys in the box and we could block them, the read was to throw it outside. And receivers did a great job on the perimeter. And Marlin got his first touchdown, which was good to see. And then at the end, McKenzie right here keeps it. And uh, O-line did a great job up front, just creating gaps and holes. And uh, McKenzie right there scores. So it was great that we were able to get in the red zone and then score touchdowns. Um, and then finally, the explosive plays. You know, anytime you can create explosives and create them for touchdowns, it's always going to help you out. And you have a great chance of winning right here. We run a clear out for Traquan. He comes over top of the linebackers underneath the safeties. He does a great job once the ball gets in his hands of making guys miss and taking it to the house. And it, this was the, probably the biggest play of the game. You know, we were kind of struggling. We were on, we had 28 points for a long time, third down. And Otis, proud of the young man, you know, he had a fumble earlier in the game. Uh, he bounced back, made a great cut. And then I love the effort by Traquan, unselfish football player, unselfish football team. You know, and what he said was... A little happy hour, two for one. Yeah, right two for one. Um, and what he said when he came to the sideline was that Otis was so dejected after his fumble that he wanted to make sure that he scored. That's good. Uh, you know, on the defensive side, obviously we had some good, some bad. Um, just a couple plays here that I thought kind of highlighted what was going on uh, in the run game. Th this one right here, this is a good job, and it doesn't look like a whole lot, but I got to give Tony Gerard credit on this one. We talk all the time about if the ball's on the ground, just keep playing and get the football because you never know what's going to happen. You don't know if, if they're going to call a fumble. You don't know if they're going to call an incomplete pass. This one, they actually called an incomplete pass. Tony didn't stop playing, and you can see, you can see around the ball there's a lot of guys standing around the football that could have a chance to get that, but he's the only one that didn't stop playing. And, you know, Coach Frost did a great job. You guys called down from the booth, said call a timeout and make them review it. They reviewed it, and all of a sudden it's a turnover. So hats off to Tony Grard. He was our player of the game on defense, but he kept playing and, and, and got a huge play for us. The next play here is going to be the, the interception by Mike Hughes. Okay, they, they all of a sudden, we were getting in the backfield. This quarterback, I'll give him some credit too. He took some shots in this game. Now, he, he got hit pretty hard and he, he kept standing in there. Um, but this time we rushed four, and you can see they go max protect with seven. Um, so we got some free players. But Mike really had the big hat on in this play. He was playing man coverage. Uh, once this ball got up in the air, though, I thought he had a chance. And he made, obviously, a great play. He finds the football. He's stride for stride with that man in phase. And then he goes and makes a great turned, catch. Turned into a receiver there. He turned into a receiver. That's absolutely right. As soon as you can run the route for that guy, you got a chance to go make a play. Um, and this kid didn't really exactly – we had a lot of field pressure going, so he was getting a little happy in the pocket. Um, and he just threw one up, and Mike made a great play. And I think they only threw about one or two balls at Mike, and he, he picks one of them. Uh, and then the last one we got on here, this is just one of those fourth down stops. You know, they had fourth and, and two, fourth and one three times, and we got off the field on all three. Um, here we just go a little zero blitz. Obviously, everybody in the house knew we were playing man coverage. They needed a yard. We knew they needed a yard. They ran power, which is a pretty common play on short yardage. Uh, Trey doesn't make a devastating hit here, but he does his job. He fills his hole. Gabe, Gabe uh, Luanda really makes a great play here. He's actually the blitzer, and he gets a pulling guard, so he bangs it across, and Pat runs to his coverage. It's great, great job by those guys getting off the ball, uh, off the field on fourth and one. And knocking him backwards. Yeah, absolutely, right. knocking it all backwards. You know, you don't want to tackle and let it go all forward. You know, if they punt this ball, they get it inside the 10. When we can get it to you guys, you know, close to the 50-yard line, good things happen. We love so, that. We love that. Yeah. So, they, I thought it was a great great team win. Like you said, you guys played well on offense. We played good on special teams. Mack Loudermilk punted the ball well. Um, the defense played pretty good. So, um, good win going into, going into week uh, 10 now. 9-0. Feels good. It does feel good. Yep. As far as the Temple guys go, uh, up next – they, they've kind of they're, – they're growing as a team. You can kind of watch game one through game now, and 
they're getting better every week. And, and they do have some good football players. They obviously have the running back um, back from last year. They have some good receivers on the outside, and the quarterback they've settled in is doing a nice job. Um, here you see on, on Navy, uh, Navy go ahead and, and, and pressures these guys. And this receiver, they got big, tall receivers that can really run on the edge, and they do a nice job catching the ball. Um, and the new quarterback's doing a nice job of m maybe not even, you know, you, you watch some guys and you're like, that's an NFL throw. But he does a nice job of putting it up where their big receivers can go get it. Um, so they, they definitely have some dangerous threats on the perimeter. Now, what they've also shown is they've shown a lot of uh, little trickeration. They've become in all kinds of formations. I've never even seen half these formations. It kind of looks like uh, we look on point after touchdown, the PAT swinging gate. Um, but the dangerous guy is number 13. He's the wildcat quarterback, if you want to call it, whatever everybody calls that guy now. But he's going to take the direct snap. He can throw it and he can run it, and he's really good with the ball in his hands. So really what you have to do, and as you guys know, a lot of your formations, you're trying to find out where the numbers are as well. You have to get numbers to where these people are. And he's, he's really dangerous with the ball in his hands. So you can't let this guy beat you. Against a couple of these teams, they've gotten these formations five, six times a game. Usually it's at least once. I think they want to find out if you can get lined up. If you can, they'll probably stay away. If you can't, you better get ready. You know, they got, they got a nice job running the football. A lot of teams start overplaying the run, and then they got a pretty nice RPO game. A lot of slants, a lot of the same kind of things that you guys want to do in the RPO game, and, and these guys are hard to tackle in space. Right here you see a slant that probably should be tackled for seven, and this thing is going to go to the house. And obviously uh, – 13 again. Yeah, right? 13 again. So he, he's, a, he's a really good football player. He can do a lot of things in, in the receiving game as that Wildcat quarterback – and you don't want to let him get started once he gets the ball in his hand. Mm. Tell us what they got going on defense. Yeah, this is actually going to be one of the better defenses we're going to play against uh, this season. Uh, they're playing at a high level. Um, you know, their the head coach is a, is a defensive guy, and so uh, it's a reflection of, of him, and just they play hard. They play, they're tough. Uh, they, they play with emotion and passion, but it really starts up front, and they've got a great front, uh, front four defense alignment. Uh, they get after it. Uh, they're very stout. They want to create a new line of scrimmage. Right here you see them pushing Cincinnati's offensive lineman back, creating a new line of scrimmage, and coming off and making a play. So they've got length, size, athleticism, um, really a, a good offense or good defensive line. And right here you'll see penetrate. There's really nowhere to run. They let the linebackers fill, and they sheds a block and comes off and makes a play. And right here, pass rushing. They're able to come off the edge, able to get pressure on the quarterback, make sure he's unstable. And now they come off and make a play. So it really starts with their defense up front with their D-line. They get after it. Um, so we've got to make sure we're stout. We've got to make sure we protect McKenzie and we create run lanes for the, uh, in the run game. And then what they do on the back end is they're going to get up and they're going to press. They've got a 6'3 corner, a 5'11", 200-pound corner, um, they play a lot of defensive secondary defenders. Uh, they're going to get in our face. They're going to really take away any of the quick throws and make you earn it. And if they can disrupt the, the timing of our, of our pass concepts and then get pressure on the quarterback, then they'll win. And right here you'll see press man, press man. Really nobody's open. They'll keep a high safety in the middle, trying to rob anything, read the quarterback's eyes. Uh, right here you'll see the uh, DN come off the, come off the ball, get to an edge and create uh, pressure on the quarterback. So um, all in all, this, is a, this defensive unit is probably playing as well as anybody we, we played against. And so we're going to have to make sure that uh, we're on our game, we're detailed, we're fundamentally sound. And the, the most important thing, we've got to match their intensity Absolutely. and their passion. And we know it's going to be a tough game. This, these, are, these are tough guys, and, and uh, we got to be ready to go up there and be ready to get in the fight. They're trying to get bowl eligible. It's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a good game. On the road, it's never easy, you know, to stay undefeated. But uh, I can't wait for the challenge. Go Knights. Charge on.